You explain to the child that we have something we're going to do today, and you have to be excited, get them excited about this, that we have noticed you've been holding on to a lot of big feelings. And I use big feelings across the board. Just It could be anger, it could be sad, it could be frustrated. Big feelings is just a general term. The child will be more specific with us as we start working with them. So with a phone book, what I say is you're going to open the phone book and you're going to rip out some pages. And I, you know, I'm not a floor time therapist, but I do this. We all get on the floor and we sit around and I go, we're going to rip out some pages and we're going to let out some big feelings. So at first I don't say words. I say they don't have to say any words. They can rip it up and throw it up. And it's a cathartic experience. The parents are there too. We're all modeling how to do it. We want to, again, entice the child. A lot of kids are resistant, but as adults, if we're modeling for them how to do it, they're going to follow. We start, I'm mad because I can't drink soda for breakfast. A complaint. I ask the parents, is there anything the child says said during the week that you notice they had a lot of big feelings about? Uh, can you... Can you say it for them? And I'll ask the child permission. Would you be willing to let mom and dad say something that you're not so happy about, something that you've been holding on to? So as we're doing the I messages, this is a very good time to teach a child an I message, which is, I feel mad. I feel sad. I feel scared. I use the four basic feelings, mad, sad, scared, glad because there's so many emotions. I want it to be very structured, concrete, so we just, I start with that. I feel mad, I feel sad, I feel scared, and then I show them, you know, we rip up the paper and we throw it up in the air. It's cathartic for them. So, what I also point out is that, at, that guess what, all of these feelings, guess who's going to pick them up, clean them up? Usually the child thinks it's them, your parent, your mom and dad are going to pick up all these feelings and hold on to them for you. You don't have to clean it up. Okay? And one of the things that I be very careful of saying is that this is garbage. Because this is not garbage. This is very important, all of these feelings that we're expressing today. So we're going to put them in a big bag and mom and dad are going to hold on to them. Okay, so that excites the child too. They really want to make a mess. What am I doing? I'm enticing them to just rip at it and let out their, and express their emotions. I've had some kids write things on the pages and rip it up. They don't have to tell us what they're writing. I'll have parents write things. I'll write things because sometimes it's hard to say things. You can write it on the paper and rip it up. That gives the child an opportunity to, again, express. I really encourage parents, the more open, the more safety in the room, the more the child's going to express. If a parent is feeling triggered, which happens, because when kids really start expressing, you can start to see the dynamic between the parent and the child. The parent might get, uh-oh, you know, the child's getting overwhelmed, the parent starts getting triggered. I'll have a parent have a notebook with them while they're doing this and they can write down what they're feeling so they can process their own internal reflection. So they can reflect and regulate what's going on with them when their child's having these really big feelings. Really important in attachment that a parent is understanding of their own internal dynamic so that they can stay connected attuned and be able to regulate the child because if they cannot regulate themselves and stay regulated, they cannot stay connected and regulate that child. So it's just a little sidebar. They can have a notebook. They can write down, take deep breaths, whatever it is they're experiencing during their child's experience so they can stay connected. I'll have a parent. I'll encourage them to go, ooh, wow, whoa. Be open, be curious, have the attitude of curiosity and playfulness. We don't want this to be heavy. We don't want a parent to be watching everything. We want them to have that open face, 
have an attitude of curiosity and playfulness. This is fun. Even if we're saying some really big stuff, I want them to have fun with it because that's the catharsis here that we're having together. The child doesn't have to rip, rip up the entire phone book. I've had kids do parts of it and then we save it for next time. So, you know, if we're following the child's lead, if we've said maybe four things, that's enough. Maybe we've made four statements about, I'm mad that I couldn't stay with that foster home. Or I'm mad my dad hit me. Or I'm mad about this. Or I'm mad I can't get everything I want. If, there, if it has been expressed, there's going to be a calm, a more peaceful environment in the room. And you're going to know by your own judgment, okay, it's time to move on. Then I have the child sit on a chair. I give them cookies or a juice box. And I go, okay, now you're going to point out all the feelings that mom or dad have to pick up now and hold for you. I give the parent the pillowcase. It doesn't have words on it yet. And I first, I'll have the parent and either parent or parents go inside and sit in all the feelings. Sit in it. And I go, whoa, what does it feel like to be in all those feelings? In your child's feelings. And I'll have the parent process that. Because it's really cathartic for them too. They're now in it. In this stuff. I take a moment to be present. Because it's a mess, right? What is a limbic brain? Non-linear, chaotic, confusing, overwhelming. This is it. We're in it. So I want to have the parent experience this and not be afraid of it. But join. This is an intervention in joining a child's inner process. So I'll have the parent process, make a statement like, wow, look at all these big feelings. Boy, this is a lot. I didn't realize you had all these feelings. Thank you. I always want gratitude in here because that creates safety. Thank you for sharing and expressing all of this with us. Thank you for telling us you have all these feelings. You're not alone in them anymore. Mom, Dad, we're here with them and we're going to hold on to them. So then piece by piece, the parent's going to pick up the piece and say something. They're going to say, I'm so sorry. You're so angry because you couldn't stay with your foster mom. I'm going to have the parent have empathy for the child's feelings that we've now displayed in the room. I'm going to ask the parent, would you be willing to pick up that baby piece? I've done that a lot. If I see a little piece, I go... Those are some baby feelings right now. Would you pick those up right there and give those love too? So the parent's giving the piece by piece the feelings love. Sometimes we'll pick up a big scoop and go, oh, look at all these big feelings. There's so many. I'm going to hold on to them. And the parent puts them in the pillowcase. And after they're all picked up, and I'll have the child be the supervisor. Okay, did mom... Find, are there any feelings that are missing that mom or dad didn't get? And I'll have the child, you know, walk around and see, oh, you missed that feeling. It's pretty funny. You missed this feeling, mom. This was my really big feeling. What kids say and pro, look what I'm doing. Look what you're doing. You're enticing, they're expressing, we're honoring, we're validating, we're connecting. So after they're all picked up and put in the bag, I put a little rubber band, and I ask the parents to write something on the bag. Now that they've had this experience, they've joined with the child's experience, and write something, I love you, I hear you, we understand, whatever feels authentic from that parent to the child. And like I showed last time, then I tell the parent, you're going to hold on to these feelings. And I want you to put them someplace close to you, next to your bed. And I tell the child, I want you to watch. Make sure mom and dad are holding on to your feelings. And I'll encourage the parent, without the child knowing, that I want you to walk through the house, carrying the bag. And you see that child? Let them know. 
You don't have to say anything. Just look at them. It's really powerful. Really powerful. Because the kid's going to do a double take and go, wait, what's she doing? Oh, that's right. She's got my feelings. Oh, she's holding on to me. And what am I doing in psychoanalytic theory is I'm creating object constancy. That's what these kids are lacking. Object constancy is someone is keeping me in their mind, especially because of so many separations that they've had, especially that separation from their birth parent and any other multiple placements they've been in. Who is carrying them in their mind? So that's what this signifies. And it's an externalization of that process, of that mentalization in theory. And kids need a lot of externalizing. So good luck. This is a fun one and a good one. We can do this over and over and over.